Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the next part that we will talk about is tongue. So as we all know, tongue is a freely movable organ. So you can just try it out inside your mouth. You can freely move your tongue throughout the oral cavity. It is muscular in nature since it is muscular in nature and that is why you are able to move it. So the muscular contraction and expansion actually helps in its movement. And this movement of the tongue helps to swallow the food. It helps to push the food inside the food pipe. It also helps you to speak. It also bears the taste buds which helps you to sense taste of the food which you are eating. So upper surface of the tongue bear papillae which bear the taste buds. Now what are papillae? So these are small hair like structures which are present on the upper surface. So here you will see small dotted structures. In fact if you observe your tongue also very closely you will see that some rough texture is there on the surface of your tongue and that rough texture is because of these fine hair like structures which are known as papillae and these papillae bear the taste buds. So as I said because of the presence of these hair like structures we can feel the rough texture of the tongue. Not all but most of the papillae are associated with taste buds. Now the third important part of the oral cavity that is saliva. As I said it is a clear watery substance which is produced in the oral cavity by the salivary glands. So there are as I said the, this water will not come into your mouth magically right. There has to be some organ which actually secretes that watery substance. Now what are those organs present in our body which gives some secretion or which secrete certain substances. They are called glands. So similarly salivary glands are present inside the uh, mouth which secrete this watery fluid called saliva which plays a very important role in the process of digestion. So you can feel the presence of saliva mostly when uh, your mouth starts to water on seeing something very delicious or let us suppose when you are very hungry your mouth tends to water. So that time you can feel the presence of saliva very clearly. However you can feel its presence all the time. What is the saliva composed of? Well, 99.5% of the saliva is water. So basically it is all water. Only 0.5% of it consists of other substances like mucus, enzymes, electrolytes and proteins. So if you look at its composition, it is a very diluted fluid because it is almost water, almost 100% water, very small amount of mucus, enzymes and electrolytes. However, this mucus and enzymes, they play a vital role in the process of digestion and we will see how. You all know what is mucus, right? Mucus is a slimy substance, so which makes things slippery. So mucus also helps in making the food softer and to help it slip inside or move inside the food pipe. The enzymes also help by uh, breaking down carbohydrates from complex to simpler forms. So that is how the enzymes also help. So we will talk about the mucus and the enzymes a little later. So before that, let us look at the importance of saliva. Why is saliva so important? Saliva is almost like when you spit, the spit which comes out of your mouth, that is also nothing but saliva. But it also plays a very important role in different aspects. So some of its importance is uh, it protects the teeth and prevent decay of teeth and gums. And that is why you would often see that if there is not sufficient saliva inside your mouth uh, and if you go to a doctor, the doctor would advise you to drink a lot of water so that uh, more and more saliva should get produced. Because if there is lack of saliva, your teeth might get decayed. Or there can be some problems or infections in your gums. So saliva protects your teeth and the gums. It also prevents bad breath. So it, it smells bad. So your cavity smells bad. So whenever you speak, a bad smell comes out. So that is also due to lack of saliva. 
it helps in chewing now as i said due to the presence of this watery substance anything which we eat that tend to become softer so once it becomes soft it becomes easier to chew it i mean your teeth doesn't really need to exert a lot of pressure to break it down because now it is softer so you can break it down easily it keeps the mouth moist and when the mouth is moist you feel quite comfortable normally as well it helps in digesting food by making it softer now it does two things due to the presence of the ends since it is watery it makes it soft so that it becomes easier for the teeth to grind it that is one thing the next thing is since it has mucus in it mucus makes it slimy and slippery so it helps it the food to get inside the body thirdly since it has enzymes which can break down carbohydrates into simpler forms so that way also it helps in the process of digestion so saliva plays multiple roles to help in the process of digesting food let us now talk about the salivary glands the cause of saliva so the, the organs which produce saliva now saliva is mainly produced by three pairs of salivary glands three pairs please note here so that means there are a total of six salivary glands which exist on each side of our mouth so here in the picture i have shown just the side view so you can just see one single uh, salivary gland of the pair so what are these three pairs of salivary glands parotid gland submaxillary gland and sublingual gland so where is the parotid gland this bigger one which you see is the parotid gland which is located here little uh, higher as compared to the other two this one is the submandibular gland this is the sub mandibular gland and this one is the sublingual gland now submaxillary is also known as submandibular so these are the three salivary glands which secrete saliva now they are present on both sides this is just one side view which is given so these three glands are also present on the other side of the mouth so all together there are six that is why it is told that three pairs of salivary glands so let us quickly talk about each of them so the salivary glands they secrete saliva and then pass pass them into the oral cavity through ducts ducts that is through tube like structures so here you can see the ducts so this parotid gland will secrete saliva and then saliva will travel through this tube like structures and then it will reach the oral cavity and there we can feel the presence of saliva so parotid gland they are located on the inside of cheeks as you can see here the cheeks and they are quite large when compared to the other two glands submaxillary gland they are also known as submandibular glands and they are located at the floor of the mouth so lower portion of the mouth if you see so that is where they are located in fact inside your mouth you can just try it out yourself you will get to know how saliva is being produced by the submaxillary gland just try out this with your tongue just try to take your tongue towards the floor of your mouth and try to generate some saliva out of that you'll see that some saliva is getting produced from the floor of your mouth so that is actually being produced by the submaxillary or submandibular gland the last one is sublingual gland and this is located under the tongue so just below the tongue and that is why you actually can feel in fact i am trying it out myself right now and i can actually feel that a lot of saliva is coming out from the lower portion of the mouth and that is because of these two glands the submaxillary gland and the sublingual gland so these three salivary glands together produce saliva and then they pass it to the oral cavity through the through ducts or tube like structures and once the saliva is there in the uh, oral cavity it it mixes with the food and it helps in the process of digestion now how it helps in the process of digestion that we will see very soon so now we are going to talk about the role of buccal cavity in digestion now till now we talked about the three important parts of the buccal cavity that is the teeth the tongue and the saliva now we will see all these together how they help in the process of digestion so let us see how buccal cavity along with all these important parts help in the process of digestion 
So the first thing that is it does is the mastication of food. What is the meaning of mastication? That is grinding of food, breaking down of food. Now I'm sure you would have guessed which part helps in that. Obviously teeth helps in that. But saliva also adds on it because saliva being water it makes the food soft. Now it is easier for teeth to grind it and to break it into smaller pieces. The second thing which it does, the buccal cavity as a whole is, it prepares the food to be swallowed. Now, how it prepares the food to be swallowed? Let us have a look. So, when I talk about mastication, saliva makes it softer and then teeth crushes it down from complex to simple forms. At least the big pieces get broken down into smaller pieces. Now, when I talk about how can we make the food prepared to be swallowed. Now, see, this is how you take in the food, right? Now, this is your oral cavity where the breaking down and all those things are happening. Now, the, your job is to make it move down to the food pipe. So, this is how it needs to be swallowed down. Now, if you want something to be swallowed down, if it is slimy and slippery and watery, it will be easier to be swallowed, right? So, that is how it prepares the food. So, what it does? Since the saliva has mucus, mucus makes the food altogether more slimy. So, it makes it slimy, slippery and watery. And the entire food which you have eaten is almost like a ball of small, small substances. Like let us suppose you have taken a bite of a sandwich. Now inside your mouth, it is being mixed with the saliva. It is being broken down by the teeth. So it is like all together, whatever you have eaten, whether it was a cucumber or an onion or whatever, everything gets mixed up and it is almost like a ball of food. So that ball is given the term of bolus. Mucus, as I said, mucus lubricates the food. Bolus is formed, which is further passed into pharynx. So what is this bolus in the shape of a ball? That is why it is called bolus. It is basically the mix of everything which you have eaten in one bite. So all the food eaten gets broken down to form a mass of food particles. It is just a mass. It is a mass of food particles particles which you have just now chewed and mixed with mucus and saliva. So now since it is slippery and slimy and a ball, a spherical in shape, ball like structure, so it becomes easier for it to be swallowed. So it just slips down your throat and that is how it is swallowed. So you understand the role of saliva, you understand the role of teeth. What does the tongue do? Since the tongue is movable, it helps in proper mixing of the food when it is inside the oral cavity and it also helps to push the bolus through the throat. So it also helps in the process of swallowing. So that is how the buccal cavity help in the process of digestion. Now let us see the chemical action of saliva on the food. So how saliva exactly acts on food. Now as I said saliva contains mucus 0.5% of saliva has mucus and enzymes. So what are those enzymes? Enzymes are salivary amylase and lysozymes. So these are the enzymes which are present in saliva and these enzymes play a vital role in breaking down complex carbohydrates into simpler forms. So what do they do? Hydrolytic action of salivary amylase on starch. Starch is nothing but a complex form of carbohydrate that is a polysaccharide. Most of the food which we eat which has uh, starch uh, carbohydrate in it for example whether we eat a piece slice of bread or something like um, rice or uh, chapati so all of them have got carbohydrates and they are generally in the form of starch which is a polysaccharide so it needs to be broken down into simpler carbohydrates like disaccharides or monosaccharides and that is done by this enzyme salivary amylase so what it does it breaks down starch into simpler form and what is that simpler form that is maltose so maltose is a disaccharide so it just has two units of monosaccharide but starch has multiple n number of monosaccharide units so it is a polysaccharides so who does this salivary amylase now salivary amylase does this in an appropriate pH. So the pH should be 6.8. So it needs the environment to be like this in order to be active. So this salivary amylase actually helps in this conversion. Now what does the other enzyme do? Lysozyme. 
it helps in preventing any infection so it has it is known for its act antibacterial action so it doesn't allow any bacteria or anything to develop inside the mouth while this reaction takes place because under this particular ph microorganisms can also cause infections and all so in order to prevent the mouth from all that uh, the lysozyme protects the mouth so what is the result of uh, the food being passed to the mouth and then to the oral cavity the result is that 30% of the starch present in the food gets hydrolyzed into disaccharides so some uh, some part of the digestion has started taking place now let us suppose if you eat a burger that burger has carbohydrates it has fats it has protein so everything is there so when you take it you chew it you swallow it till the process you swallow nothing no change happens to the fats or the proteins but the carbohydrates part 30% of the starch gets converted into disaccharides now however disaccharides again needs to be converted into further simpler form but at least some change has taken place by the time the food has passed through the mouth and the oral cavity so now where will the food go next so from the oral cavity we are going to swallow the food so where will it go it should ideally go to the food pipe that is esophagus right but we will see that there is another part which is very very important as far as swallowing of food thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again